So all of heaven is watching the earth all the time, looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. Everybody, God bless you and welcome today. We're just delighted you've joined us at Here On, More Than Conquerors program. It's always wonderful to just to nail these things down and talk about them one more time. You know, it blesses us oh, to be able to think about it, rehearse it in our minds, renews our mind, our minds to what we need to do, and then be able to pass that information on to you, and then you take it and run with it. That's what everything of the gospel is about. Sure. Is just write the vision, make it plain so people can run with it. Absolutely. And so we're, we just want to go back over a little tiny bit, darling, uh, on the recap that we've done here in teaching on spiritual authority. We found out first in the very first chapter of the Bible that God intended for creation to rule and reign with him and have that one and walk in that wonderful word dominion. Absolutely. You know, I mean, that, Absolutely. that's a that's a that's a command nearly from God. To have well, dominion, let, multiply. Let them have dominion. Yeah. Let us make man in our likeness and our image, and let them have dominion right. over the over the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, the cattle of the field, beasts of the field, and over all the earth, and yeah. every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Genesis one twenty six. You see the heart of God. So we've been talking about this now for weeks and weeks. Yeah. And uh, in, in fact, it's almost frustrating. I just want to keep going and keep going. And <laughs> then the clock tells us we've already shot through a program, you know. But yeah. uh, I've got so many testimonies, Renee. I mean, miracle testimonies. I've yes. Got testimonies that people had. not I mean, it changed their life. Right. I mean, this isn't right. just some little three points in a poem sermon. I mean, this is life or death. Yeah, this is lifestyle it's kept me. for abundant living. I mean, <laughs> you know, for us to live like that. And I'm just amazed that nobody... I ain't even got to the New Testament scriptures yet. Yeah, that all the years you and I were raised in a Pentecostal church, nobody ever taught on having dominion. No. You know, it no, was no, no, it no, was no. like we're going to bombard the gates of heaven and try to talk God so. into. Yeah. And it, all our prayers, so many of them, yeah. we're going to bombard the gates of heaven and like we're going to try to talk God into oh, doing yeah. something good yeah. for us. Like when he pray, told Lord, us all the time, Lord, it was ours. Strong. Lord, let me be this. Lord, let, we're, yeah. We're, right. It's not a matter of him letting us. He's already told us to do it. And yet it was we're begging amazing. him to do it, trying to twist his arm. How many powerless prayers we wasted thinking we were. Doing it right, you know. You know, there's so many, like I said, scriptures we haven't gotten to. There's so many testimonies I want to tell. But but one testimony I do want to tell um, is about spiritual authority. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it's a sad story, really. Right. But, but it's a way that God really taught me something about spiritual authority that mm-hmm. really rocked my world, uh, <laughs> rang my bell, changed my life. Right. And I've been able to preach it all over the world since then. Yes. And, and I want to tell that. We're going to take a break in just a minute. But I, I would like to tell that. And I'll, I'll try to hurry through it and, you know, not hit all the details. Although you'd love to have the details. Yes. That's how you learn how to make things work. But uh, it, it's a life and death situation. Yes, it is. And uh, it, it entails something that I tell you what, it will – it, it the, the, the minds of our listeners – you know, the hearts of our listeners are going to be affected and touched, and they're going to learn something about this vital, vital subject. Right. That we hadn't scratched the surface of the church hasn't. No, Of right. spiritual authority. Well, it's like when Paul said, you know, we both love that scripture yeah. in the Amplified where Paul talks about it stirred in the hearts, hearts of, of my, my hearers. Hearts of my hearers. <laughs> First Corinthians 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The most holy of emotions. emotions. And, that, and that's what, that's what this, this should do and would do. Because we're literally talking life and death. And so we've got several testimonies I'd like to share in the next, well, today, and yeah. then in coming programs, uh, which I can tell them all at once. Right. But that just absolutely will train people right. 
on, oh, that's how to live. That's how to do this. It really it's is not just live. saying do it. Yeah. It's how to do it. It's not just saying, that's spirit's authority. It's here's how this works. Right. And it's not just crisis situations. Mm -hmm. It should be a daily mindset mm -hmm. that you renew your mind from the pages of this book that you're in charge. God gave you the legal position Absolutely. to take dimension, dominion. Then he gave you the power to go take communion. Right. And that's what the whole Bible is all about. Exactly. And people exactly. just don't. You know, we get it confused. We did growing up. Oh, sure. And so we I had a lot of bad teaching, you know, I mean, <laughs> it, it, not, on, not on purpose. People no, right, right. right. But, um, Ignorance is not bliss. No, <laughs> like not. the world no, says, it can not. get you killed. And so we're so going to come know, back. When we come back, I want to tell yeah. this. And, 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 and it's just a, I mean, you know, because it's personal with me, it's a, it's a serious story. But I want to I share it with you. I said, God, if he pulls the trigger, my job is to believe your word, and your job is to do something about the bullet. And we're going to continue to talk about the wonderful things that we have learned about spiritual authority. Terry has based 54 years of missionary world evangelism going into the, so many parts of the world, very, very dangerous, dark parts of the world, and had to use who he was in Christ Jesus to get the job done. If you don't know who you are, <laughs> you're not going to get a whole lot done. You're going to get beat up a lot. No, but if you know right. who you are and how God gave you spiritual authority to take dominion, Genesis 1, 26, right at the very beginning of the Bible, God didn't waste any time no. to let everybody know his creation was to dominate the earth. And so we've learned the hard way on some things. And then we've learned the way in obedience to just do what the word says and you'll be OK. Yeah. But even though we learned some hard lessons, uh, it just made life easier. Yeah, it did. Because <laughs> now we're After, living in some things that we well, didn't used to know and the learned truth? them the hard way. But now once you've learned them, once you learned once them, you've learned them, you've learned. Them, you've learned yeah. Them. Amen. Praise yeah. the Lord. Anyway, I wanted to share this story with you. This was way back in 1978. Uh, so over 45 years. And you were just learning yeah, some, of, right. some of this. You oh, know. well, I didn't even know I knew it. Didn't I mean, even no, know you I needed mean, to know God it. God was dealing with me about some stuff, but I didn't right. even, I hadn't picked up on, I wouldn't have called it spiritual authority. No, right. But anyway, um, my, my wife, Jackie, who y'all know is in heaven, uh, her mother and uh, father had old divorced when she was a teenager. Right. And so uh, after Jackie and I got married, then uh, her mother met this nice gentleman. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a college professor. He was a Baptist. He loved God. Didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit or healing or any of that. But he loved God. Right. And so uh, they fell in love and came to me and said, would you perform the wedding ceremony for us? Right. So I said, sure. And so we just kind of did it in a home, you know, and. No big deal. Just a few people around. And I married him. And uh, uh, not long after that, she really, she, my mother-in-law, uh, Jackie's mother, she really uh, developed a terrible uh, case of asthma. I mean, she'd always had it, but it, just got, it was just really getting bad. And so, uh, and lived wow. out in West Texas where the wind's blowing in the sand and stuff. And uh, so we would pray for her a lot for different reasons, whatever she'd call us, and we'd pray, and, and God would always heal her. And uh, one day, uh, in, in the, I guess in the maybe spring, mm -hmm. late spring, beginning of summer, um, Jackie and I would always go, as you and Dean did, to Tulsa, Oklahoma, right. Right. the last week of July, because Brother Kenneth Hagen, Kenneth E. Hagen, uh, would always have his camp meeting the last week of right. July in Tulsa. And it'd be hot, oh my yeah. goodness, 113, 110. <laughs> but anyway, so we we were thinking about going to camp meeting. And, mm -hmm. and one day I turned to Jackie and I said, hey, darling, I've got an idea. I said, why don't you run out to Midland, Texas, which is where we're from. Only we lived a couple of hundred miles from there at that, at that point. So why don't you run out home and uh, invite your mother to go to camp meeting with us this year? And I said, well, she can, we'll get her a hotel room, we'll right. pay for it, and we'll take her to Tulsa. And, and I said, uh, and I'd like to introduce her to Brother Hagen, and I'd like to get him to pray for her. And I believe if the prophet of God prays for her, God will heal her of the asthma. Right. And Jackie said, that's a great idea. That's super. Sure. And so here in a few days, she gathered up our kiddos, and they drove out to Midland to visit for two or three days. And I stayed there and went on a trip, did something. And uh, anyway, when they came back, she said to me, uh, 
She said, darling, I talked to mother about coming to camp meeting with us and, and getting Brother Hagen to pray for her. And said, uh, she, uh, she said, no, thank you. She, she's not going to come. And Renee, it made me so mad. All right. I mean, it made me angry. Yeah. The unexplainable anger. Mm -hmm. uh, it embarrassed me. I was so mad. I couldn't figure out why I was so mad. Like, well. It's like, Terry, what's wrong with you? I, it's none of your business. So what? Thousands yeah. of people aren't going to come to camp <laughs> meetings. So what? But I was right. so mad, Renee, and I was mad in here. Yeah. And I just couldn't figure it out. I was just, oh. I mean, I could have, you know. Uh. And uh, Jackie would say, darling, what's wrong with you? And I said, I don't know. She said, I can't believe you're so mad. I was like, I can't either, you know, and, and she's, I've never seen you like this. I never have either. Uh, it's it's weird. And we just couldn't figure out why I was so mad. Right. But I mean, just day after day after day, I'd wake up and I'd just say, oh, I am so mad. You know? <laughs> and and just, mm. Mm. and it was just bugging me terribly. And so anyway, the, she said, well, she won't come. And so uh, we went to camp meeting when it got to be time and, and uh, uh, got up there, had a great camp meeting. And uh, it always started on Monday and ended on Saturday night. Right. So we stayed for the whole thing. Wonderful and, meetings. Yeah. And then Sunday we went to church at, I think, Buddy Harrison's church, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, or no, he hadn't started his church yet. We went to church somewhere. And uh, no, he had just started his church. I'm sorry. And so we went to church there. Mm -hmm. And uh, then Monday we just stayed over and just visited with some friends of ours, a lot right. of preacher friends right. and a lot right. of people there. And, and so we just spent the whole day out. And we even we even uh, you know went to lunch and dinner with people and 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 uh, even ran by Buddy's church and visited with Janie and Bill Grind, dear friends of ours. But anyway, we, my point is we got back late to the hotel. And in those days, there was no cell phones. In those days, right. you didn't talk to people back home unless you, know, you had a landline. And and so uh, we didn't get back to our hotel until late Monday night. And when we got back to the hotel, the the message light on the telephone was blinking. And so I picked up the phone, called the front desk, and I said, hey, my message light's blinking. They said, yes, sir, we have a message for you uh, mm. to call home. It's an emergency. Wow. And I said, oh, great. You know, so I hung the phone up and d dialed the number and called back home. And I said, uh, "I said, hey, what's going on? We just got in. We've been out all day, and we just got in. And, and um, they said it's an emergency. And they said, Terry, um, Jackie's mother died today. Wow. And I'm on the phone like, what? And they said, yes, yeah, she, she died. They said she had a really bad attack of asthma. And oh, so we rushed okay. her to the hospital, and they worked on her, but, but they, 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 they lost her that she died. And I'm standing there, Renee, with, on the phone and looking at Jackie, thinking, i got to hang up this phone and tell her her mother's dead. Man. And so, uh, you know, she, she was getting ready for bed, and so I uh, hung the phone up, and I said, baby, um, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you're, you're, they said your mom passed away today. And, of course, she was crushed. I was crushed. Right. I mean, I loved her mother. And she loved me. And we sat and cried and held each other for a while. And, and finally, I just said to her, I said, hey, um, let's, just, let's, just, let's just go tonight. Mm -hmm. It's an 11-hour drive. But I said, we're not getting any sleep. There's no sense us trying to go to bed. I said, let's just pack up and leave. And we'll be there, you know, by daybreak tomorrow and so on and so forth. So we started packing mm -hmm. and as we're packing getting ready uh, i was so bothered by that and so irritated and so frustrated and so trying to get an answer and, I, and and so i just was saying to the lord you know what jackie was packing her stuff i'm packing mine and i said i said lord what's the deal what's the deal that's not right that's, that's not right. right i said that's my mother-in-law that's, ja that's, no, that's jackie's right. mother that's, that's, right. that's not right I mean, we're, I'm, I'm a man of God. I'm supposed to know these kind of stuff. That's you know, right. I'm not, what, what's the deal? And so the Lord spoke to me and said something to me that, like I said, well, go just rocked my world. And, and it changed my life. And it, it taught me some things about spiritual authority that I tell you what is still valid today. And it's, it's going to help you. And it's going to bless you. So hang on. Don't go away. And uh, I want to I want to finish this up when we come back. Well, there's so many things here we've got to cover here today for you. And we want you to hear the rest of this testimony and then begin to say to yourself during these segments, God gave me spiritual authority. Amen. God gave me the right to take spiritual authority. God said for me to take dominion, yes. to live in dominion over myself, 
my family, my children, my money, my finances, my job, and then go into all the world and preach the gospel and have dominion there too. So Amen. we'll be right back. Hello, everybody. It's Terry Mize here. You know, God said about Abraham, I, I'm his friend, and I know that Abraham will tell his children about me. God also said to the people of Israel to tell your kids about God all the time. I've had people ask me for years, Brother Terry, should we, should we cram this down their throat? Should we make them go to church? Should we talk to our kids about the things of God? And I always say, no, uh, God only said do it four times. He said, whenever you rise up, whenever you lay down, whenever you go out your house, whenever you come back in your house, tell your children about the things of God. In other words, all day long. We're in a war for the hearts, the minds, and the soul of America. You know, I'm concerned about America. I mean, all my life, 53 years, I've been a third world missionary evangelist traveling all over the world, and I kind of left America to the church at home, but, but uh, we're in a war over America. Uh, just recently, I saw a, a video of a, of a politician in, in uh, Michigan, uh, probably most of you know who that is, talking about how we must change America into a Muslim nation, that, we, that, that Allah wants us to change America and wants us to get the minds and the hearts of the people to turn to Islam. Well, I'm telling you what, we're not losing America to Islam. We're not losing America to communism. We're not losing America to socialism. We are the Christians, the people of God, the men and women of God called by his name, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, and we're going to preach the gospel. And we're not going to lose our kids and we're going to teach them about the things of God. You know, I'm, I'm asking you to hook up with me and Renee hook up with this ministry, with More Than Conquerors, to get the gospel not only to the world, but to save America as well. So even though I've never done this before in 53 years of third world missionary evangelism, I'm asking you today to pray about and consider joining Renee and myself in World Missions in, in partnership, monthly partnership. In fact, we're, we're believing God. I'll tell you what I've asked the Lord and asked heaven. I've never said to you, but I've asked heaven and asked the Lord uh, to give us three different levels of partnership that people would, would give $20 a month. I'm believing for 2,000 people that would give $20 a month every month faithfully. Then I'm asking for 200 people that would give $100 a month faithfully committed uh, every month. And then I'm asking for a third level, which would be churches or businesses that would give $1,000 a month. If we had 25 partners, 25 churches, 25 businesses that would give $1,000 a month, uh, those three levels, if you'd set your faith, believe God with us, God will provide it for you. I know I've partnered with people before and said, Lord, you provide it and I'll give it. If he doesn't provide it, then don't give it. But but that's what faith does. It stretches us. You know, when my kids were little, uh, they had a little toy out on the market and I had them for my kids. And it was a, a muscle man by the name of Stretch Armstrong. And you could just take Stretch and just pull him and pull him and pull him. Well, that's what faith does to us. Faith stretches us. And, and you can stretch your faith by making that commitment. So believe God with us. Pray about it. Talk to your husband. Talk to your wife. Pray about it would make all the difference in the world. That's who we are, worldwide ministers. We're not going to lose America. We're not going to lose the world. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you for praying about it. Thank you for hooking up with us. You are more than conquerors. Well, we're back, and Terry's telling a wonderful story that will help you understand who has spiritual authority, how to use it, and when you don't, and when it's been given to somebody else <laughs> that doesn't know how to have spiritual authority. Right. So, darling, go ahead. Anyway, so uh, uh, I was packing, and Jackie was packing. We get our stuff together to drive back home to her mother's funeral. And I'm saying, Lord, what's the deal? Why, why, I should know this. I'm, I'm a man of God. My, that's my mother-in-law, Jackie's mother. How, how, sure. How, how could this happen to me not know it? Uh, what, what's, what's going on? And the Lord spoke to me. It was so well, like I said, it changed my life forever. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said to me, uh, he said, Jackie's mother has not asked you to pray for her well, since she got remarried. Wow. And, I, and I'm packing. I said, what? And he said, again, he said, she has not asked you to pray for her wow. since she got married. She married a gentleman named Paul. We always call him Big Paul. And, since, and the Lord said that to me. He said, since she married Big Paul. 
And I said, is that right? Is that possibly right? And I said, I said, darling, and she said, what? I said, uh, has your mom asked us to pray for her? They hadn't been married very long. It's maybe a year, year and a half. I said, has your mom asked us to pray for her since uh, she and Big Paul got married? Mm. And she's crying and packing. She said, I don't know. I said, well, think about it. It's important. And I didn't know why it was important, but, but I needed to answer the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, well, I don't know. And I said, well, stop and think about it, baby. Help me think. Because uh, she's always called us and asked us to pray. Did, did, has she right. has she done it since right. since they got married? She said, well, I don't know. And she thought, and she sat there, and she said, she said you know what? I, I, I don't think she has. Right. And I said, okay. And then I said to the Lord, so what? Okay, big deal. She hadn't asked me to pray. So what? And the Lord said this to me, Renee, mm -hmm. and it tell you, wow. it, gee whiz. And he said, because you used to have spiritual authority over her. That's the important I part. I had no <laughs> clue and didn't know what that even was. He said, he mm -hmm. said, anytime she got in trouble, mm -hmm. she said, find the kids, find Terry and Jackie, get the kids to pray. If they, if they pray, I'll be all right. right. She had faith in our faith. Right. She looked to me. As her spiritual covering right. or authority, although she'd have never said that, right. nor would I have said it. We didn't even think in those terms. Right. But but anytime she had a problem physically, I mean, anyway, she'd say, "Find the kids, find find right. Terry and Jackie, find Terry and Jackie. I'll be all right." You know. And so they'd find us, and we'd get on the phone, and she'd tell us the problem. We'd pray, and bam, she's healed. You know, a lot of people in the military, I remember through different wars and family stories too, Terry, is that military people would say, call my mama and have her pray. Oh, absolutely. And that's the transference of they're absolutely. giving somebody else spiritual exactly. authority. Call my mama and she'll pray. Call my grandmother and she'll pray. Because, see, you have spiritual authority that God's given to you. Right. But people don't know it. Yeah. And so it can be given away. It can it be can. transferred. That's right. And, and it, 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 it can be taken away. <laughs> yes. It, it can be given to someone else. Right. It can be given to the wrong people. Oh, that's right. You know, we, we give spiritual authority to doctors, and, and sometimes that's not a good idea. That's not a good idea. You know, people always say, oh, you know, Terry, doctors have God complexes. I say, you know why? Because you give them one. We give them Because one. You, that's you, right. you give them better. I don't give a doctor. When I go in there, I tell them what I'm there yeah, for and what I want right. them to do. That's right. <laughs> you know, and we'll talk about that another yeah, time. But That's good, too. But, um, wow. Uh, you, you know, you need to look at people as hired help that you're <laughs> that you're paying them to do a that's service. That's right. That's right. But anyway, um, so I said to the Lord, I said, I, I said, okay, so so she hadn't uh, asked us, and he said, well, she, you used to be her spiritual authority, and said she had, she had faith in your faith, and she'd call you and you'd pray, and she he said the day she got married to Big Paul, she transferred that spiritual authority wow. to him. She, he said she didn't know she did. That's right. But she yeah. transferred that to him, and she looked to him. Right. And the Lord said, and that would have been okay right. if he had the goods. Now, right. I'm not saying anything bad about him. He was a nice guy and a great guy. In fact, I waited till after he died till I ever even told this testimony. I didn't right. want to speak. It's because he didn't do it on purpose. He didn't right. know what he was doing. Sure. He loved God, Baptist man, loved God. Uh, but she looked to him, Right. and the Lord said that would have been okay. If he had had the goods, if he had had the spiritual authority, knew what to do, but he didn't know, wow. so she died. And I tell you, Renee, rocked my world. I learned something that night about spiritual authority. And in that 11-hour drive home, I thought about it and wow. thought about it and talked to Jackie about it over and over and over. And since that point, that was 40-some-odd years ago, uh, we've learned a bunch of stuff about, yeah, about no spiritual joke. authority. But you can you can transfer it. You can give it to people. You can take it away from people. Right. Uh, and, and we have to be very careful who we give spiritual authority to. That's it. And we have to be very careful who we take it away from or how much we give to them or wh whether we have, you know, boundaries. Uh, it, well, it's, it's, like, it's absolutely life and death, and it's vital. The example I've heard you give so many times to people, it's like a father giving away a bride. Oh, exactly. And if I had time, I'd have Talk, if that brought boy, that up already. Yeah. If that boy knew in, what in he was doing. In an American doing. wedding ceremony, yeah. we have what's called the giving away of the bride. Right. What we ought to call it is the transferring of spiritual authority. That's exactly That's what we ought right. to call it. That's because exactly Because so many times right. the, 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 the bride and groom are going to get married, and, and, the, and the groom stands up here by the preacher, and he doesn't know, have a clue what he's doing. He just right. made her because she's good looking or got long hair or 
long yeah. legs or whatever. <laughs> and she just marrying him because he's got, you know, curly hair and a new car and, <laughs> you know, and he's cute. And, but yeah, they don't have a right. clue what's going on. No, right. And the so, is and so when bliss. she comes down that aisle with her dad, that little two step, you know, and, 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 and the groom standing here of the past, he's got this silly grin on his face and drooling with hormones, you know, <laughs> all he's thinking about is getting, exactly her, getting right. her in bed tonight. Yeah. And, uh, and the and then the, the the dad stops right next to the mom. Wow! Well, and and then the the preacher asks this huh, serious, important, sometimes deadly question. Yeah. He said, "Who gives this woman to be married to this man?" Right. And the dad's job is to say, "Her mother and I do." Do what? Do give her away. Right. Do transfer spiritual authority. Do take our spiritual authority off of her. Right. And give it to this guy. And then he takes a couple steps forward with his daughter, raises the veil, gives her a kiss. He sits down by mom and never to be heard from again, never to be seen again, ever. <laughs> and she well, takes this guy's hand up here with the grin on his face. Right. And the the preacher then tells a great lie and and says, I pronounce them husband and wife knowing they probably won't ever be, may never, ever, ever be may never if they be. hadn't learned some things and had right. some counseling. But nevertheless, uh, the, the thing is that she's now transferred that spiritual authority to this guy, which would be fine right. if he's got the goods. <laughs> if he knows what that is. the question is, will he, your mom and dad fight for you? Right. I mean, if a bad guy was after you, your, your mom and dad, men did fight hell for you. That's right. Will this guy? Right. Will he be there when the chips are down? Right. Will he be there when you get sick? Will he be there when times are tough? Will he be there right. if a if a if a if a rapist is coming at you? What's he going to do? Yeah. Does he have the spiritual authority that your dad? Yeah. And, and if he in does, prayer, if he faith. does, that's wonderful. Yeah. Right. If he knows how to pray and knows how to operate, fine. But if he doesn't, be some serious trouble. Anyway, yeah. we've been talking about spiritual authority yeah. for several weeks. I think we're going to keep on. And I can share us a lot of testimonies no, that's, that's going to help truth. some people and, and minister truth. to them. But go back and pick up these older series all yes. last month and, uh, and, and and catch up with us. Well, you know, it, it it really, Terry, that the old saying about somebody married up or they married down, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. my goodness, when you're in a position where you're handing your child off to somebody else, you want to hand them off to somebody that's even got more than you do or that's Absolutely. willing to learn, you know, Absolutely. and you don't want your daughter or a son marrying someone that is in less position to take spiritual well, authority. Exactly right. Well, as Terry said, our time is gone. We have had a good time today and we thank you for joining us. And again, we want to tell you one more time from God's word. You are more, more than, than a conquerors. conquerors. Renee and I just want to remind you that the greatest miracle of all time and the only eternal miracle is salvation. So uh, let's just do that right now. Pray this prayer after me. Father God, I come before you today to accept Jesus. I believe in my heart Jesus is the Son of God. I call on you today according to your word. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Make me a new creature. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, and I'll serve you the rest of my days in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, the Bible says you're saved, you're born again. So write us, let us know, tell somebody that you prayed with Terry and Renee and that you gave your heart to Jesus. We love you. God bless you.